Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about um, decision making via if statements and else if statements, and we'll be learning uh, the comparison and logical operators. So let's say we want to, I don't know, have a person type in their SAT scores, and it gives feedback like uh, how well you did or you know something like that. So. Um, let's first throw in a label. The label will output whatever uh, whatever we want it to say, like good job or you did terrible, something like that. So let's call it label output as such and new text inside of it. And border style fix 3D. That's all we have to worry about for now and let's throw in a text box so this would be called let's call it txt score and let's have a button pop up called I don't know btn enter Ampersand enter, and now let's double click this. So how do we go about doing this? How do how do we set the the value of this label equal to a certain string depending on whatever the user types in here? Well, let's first create a variable to equal whatever they typed in. So let's throw in okay. So um, when it comes to declaring variables in certain instances like projects like this, it's always best to remember what data type best suits the score. Um, for an example, integers take up less space than floating types because um, they don't support, they don't have to worry about decimals. So um, in this case, since we're talking about an SAT score, it will always be an integer. So don't take up space by declaring a floating type when you can just declare an integer instead. But I'll just call an integer score is equal to and then we're going to need to convert it dot to uh, to int and don't forget the semicolon and it'll be text score dot text there we go so now how do we go about doing this uh, if a uh, certain someone's text or whatnot is a certain value well we'll have to use what are called if statements adjunct with comparison operators so let's create our list of comparison operators first. So first, um, our operators will be is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than, is less than, is greater than equal to, and less than equal to. I believe that's all of them. And let's figure out how to, how to use these in an if statement. So in order to create an if statement, type out an if followed by a pair of parentheses, then an opening curly brace, and a closing curly brace. And basically, what goes inside these parentheses will be your comparison. So we're going to want to take score, so we'll type out score, and then see if it's equal to or greater than something, whatever you'd like. And if it returns true, it'll execute whatever codes between the curly braces. So let's say they got greater than or equal to 2000 so because what's the highest now like 2400 so yeah so we have label output dot text is equal to and we should have it to um, excellent job so I'll click save and let's run this application so if this runs true if whatever we type in runs true then it will execute the code in between the curly braces so I type 2200 we get an excellent job that's pretty cool um, so allow me to close this run it again let's type in like 1800 oh we didn't get anything well, that's because it was less than 2000 so it returned false therefore it did not execute this code um, well let's check for something else let's check for if I don't know if it if the score is let's let's go up here is equal to 2400 I'll 
cut this and type out perfect score. And down here, I'll go label output dot text is equal to, and then I'll paste that back. Excellent job. And I'll have this be score is greater than or equal to 2,000. Well, if we put in 2,400, we should get the perfect score, right? Because it's equal to the 2,400. So I'll type 2,400, and we get. Wait, wait a minute. Excellent job. Wait, did I do this right? Well, it looks like I did it right, because if score is equal to 2,400, then it should um, print the perfect score, and it did only for a fraction of a second, for the smallest bit of time you can imagine, because it went to the next if statement, and whatever we typed in was greater than 2,000. So it replaced the perfect score with the excellent job. So you wouldn't see the change. It's too instantaneous, but it did happen. Uh, so what do we do? How, uh, how do we fix this? What if, what if we're talking about grades or something? That's a very basic textbook problem. They'll show you with if statements are grades. If it's equal to 100, an A+, plus. if it's greater than or equal to 90, an A. Well, how you work with these is you type in an else if. And, you, and an else if must, uh, uh, must follow an if. So you have, must have an if, and if that doesn't work, you can create an else if. So if I run this again, I type in the 2400, now we get the perfect score instead. So that's really, really cool. Um, I also want to point out, if we type in an if down here, uh, then that's going to start a whole new chain of ifs and else ifs. Every time you create an if, it will start a new chain. Lastly, if it doesn't meet the criteria of the above at all, you can just put an else, and you don't need a comparison after the else, because if none of the above turn out to be true, then we're not comparing it to anything. So we'll go label output.text is equal to ooh, or that's o. Oh. Excuse me. Ooh, I don't like middle schoolers. I hear that a lot because I'm like I'm really close to like Mesa View Middle School, so you know I hear the kids walking home. And they're always like in their groups, ooh, about stuff, and ah, you know, you remember those days. Yeah, no one liked middle school. Okay, so I'll type in, I don't know, 1800. And there you go, I get the ooh. Since neither of these two are true, then it returned the else instead. So it's kind of like your default. Um, and yeah, that's about it for that. So remember that is equal to is the double equal sign. Not equals to is this. So uh, allow me to put this in not equals right here. So I click save and I type in let's say 2300 now you get the excellent job because it's not equal because the 2300 is not equal to the 2400 um, so that returned false then this is checking to see if the score is not equal to 2000 if it's not equal return true 2300 is not equal to 2000 so it's true so it executed the excellent job so that's how that works so not too bad right not too bad uh, uh, now the last thing I'd like to show you are the logical operators. So this tutorial wasn't too bad, right? And the logical operators will include the AND, the OR, and the exclusive OR. So allow me to show you what some of these do. So this, so if you want to check more than one comparison at one time, well, you can do so. So I'll throw in an extra parenthesis right there and an extra parenthesis right there then I go inside and let's see here score is I don't know greater than 2500 let's do something like that so oh, that doesn't even make any sense so 2000 I'll get rid of all of this so if it's less than or equal to um, 2400 or or excuse me and so if it's greater than or equal to no I want that to be less than or equal to so less than or equal to 2400 and is greater than or equal to 2000 return well um, it's not perfect but let's go great score so basically this is checking a boundary but everything between 2000 and 2400 so if I type in let's say whoops 
2250, I get the great score. However, I'll run it out again. Um, if I go, let's say, 1900, I get the ooh. But wait a minute. 1900 is less than or equal to 2400. But it's not also greater than or equal to 2000. Both must be, with the when you're using the and, both must be true in order to execute the next. Now the next one is the or. Now the or, only one has to be true. Now, uh, hmm. This is, oh, you know what? I, I, I shouldn't use this because if I use the less than or greater than, then all values will work. So, um, you know what? Let me change these. I can actually change, nah. I'll just use a simple example of is equals to. That'll probably be better, huh? So, it'll check to see if you're either 2400 or 2000. So if I type in 2000, I get great score. If I got a 2050 or something, now it's an ooh, because only one of these has to be true. If I just have one of these, it returns true because with the or, only one of these have to be true. Now, let's say you have Let's make it, uh, what if you only want one to be true? What if you're checking multiple, but only one can be true? Well, you can use what's called the exclusive or. In other programming languages, you'll see it like this, x or, something like that, or maybe like that. But here, it's just a caret symbol. In other programming languages, the caret symbol is technically the exponent, but not here. So let's go... Um, let's see here, less than or equal to 2400 and greater than or equal to 2000 again so if I go 2200 which is right in between I get the ooh but wait a minute score the 2200 is less than or equal to 2000 and it's also greater than or equal to 2000 but because both are true it returns false however if I go 1800 we now get the great score because 1800 is less than or equal to 2400, but it's not greater than or equal to 2000. So that's what it means exclusively or. Only one can be true. Um, so if both are false, returns false altogether. If both are true, still returns false. Um, so that's about it. So um, these are your logical operators, these three guys right here. And these are your comparison operators right here. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And I'll see you next time.